righty, here we go. You've seen him on the O'Reilly Factor. And according to Bill, he's personally responsible for the non-existent war on Christmas. Our next speaker, David Silverman, became an activist in 1996 and soon became American Atheist New Jersey State Director. Later he became the national spokesperson for American Atheists and now he's their president. His first book, Fighting God, was released on December 1st, 2015. Please join me in welcoming David Silverman to the stage. Thank you. Good afternoon, atheists. Welcome to California Free Thought Day. I am thrilled to be here, and I would like to send a special hello to everybody who came out for the Reason Rally. Everybody come to the Reason Rally? Rock and roll. I saw a Reason Rally sweatshirt walking around. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Silverman. The organization that I'm privileged to run is American Atheists which was founded in 1963 by Madeline Murray O'Hare. Now, I'm pleased to begin this talk by announcing that our next American Atheist National Convention will be in Charleston, South Carolina in August of 2017 during a total eclipse of the sun. So please mark your calendars and check us out at atheist.org for more information. Today, however, we're going to talk about message. I've got music coming from the speakers. I've got music coming from the speakers. We're going to talk a little bit about a message for California Free Thought Day. Hashtag secular pride. No, we're going to have to have a conversation. So please, everyone, before I begin, I'd like to, to th ask you to think of how you identify yourselves when asked about your religion, whether it be atheist or agnostic or secular humanist or whatever. And I want you to all at once Yell it out. Ready? One, two, three, go! Ah, uh, you've heard this speech before. <laughs> now, folks, uh, some of you shout, a lot of you shouted out atheists because you've heard this speech. I heard a lot of free thinker, and I heard a lot of uh, I heard some humanist in there. And I want you to think about how that sounded. Did it sound unified, or did it sound jumbled? Did it sound strong, or did it sound weak? And how did you feel? Did you feel like you were surrounded with people like minds? Or did you feel like you were the only one saying your words? We're going to have a talk about euphemisms, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about euphemisms instead of calling ourselves atheists. When we use euphemisms, instead of calling ourselves atheists, we sound to the outside world like a mess, like a jumbled noise. So, Let's try something different just for now. Just this once, just now, try it my way. An atheist, ladies and gentlemen, is a person without a theism, a person without a belief in a deity. If you don't have a belief in a deity, you're an atheist. It's not about whether you're absolutely sure there are no gods. It's not about whether or not you know everything in the universe. It's about not having a belief in a God. If you don't have a belief in a God, for whatever reason and whatever circumstance, you are an atheist. If you don't have a belief in a God and you don't know the entire universe, you are an atheist. If you don't have a belief in a God, but you like some of the secular trappings of the religion in which you were raised, you are an atheist. And most importantly, folks, if you don't have a belief in a God, and you absolutely hate the word atheist. Too bad, you're still an atheist. <laughs> now go with me on this, folks. Just for now, just go with me. If you don't have a belief in a God, let me hear you say atheist. Atheist. Again. Atheist. Now, doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound unified and powerful? And how did you feel? Were you alone? Or were you in a damn good company? Ladies and gentlemen, in my book, Fighting God, I quantify and defend with numbers, because I like data, the, just the assertion that America is 27% atheist today. 
27%. That is, 27% of Americans are atheists, but according to the polls, only 2.5% of the population calls themselves atheists, which means 90% of America's atheists don't call themselves atheists. But look at the contrasts. If you go out and just ask a Methodist or a Baptist or a Presbyterian what their religions are, you'll get Christian. One word. But if you ask a bunch of atheists what their religions are, you'll get any number of euphemisms like agnostic or humanist, all in an effort to not call themselves what they are, atheists. Now, let me just diverge a little bit and talk about the wonderful word agnostic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, nobody should ever use the word agnostic about anything. It's the wrong word. I'm going to show you something very interesting. I hold in my hand a cell phone. Ooh. I bought this cell phone myself. I call people on my cell phone. I use this cell phone every day. I am sure this is a cell phone. I don't know everything in the universe. This could be God cleverly disguised as a cell phone. I can't prove it wrong, neither can you. But I'm sure this is a cell phone. We use the word sure all the time. We use certain, we use definite. And in none of those circumstances do we know everything in the universe. But when somebody asks atheists about their religion, people say agnostic because they hedge. They, they elevate God above everything that we know to be true. We put a bar out for everything. I mean, I'm sure this is a microphone stand. I'm sure my name is David Silverman. And I'm sure there's no Santa Claus. But when we talk about religion, when we call ourselves agnostic, we elevate religion above everything that we know and say, oh, the man in the sky, maybe. I don't know everything. And that is us, ladies and gentlemen, being victims of religion. That is us putting religion on a pedestal because religion told us to. That is us making religion stronger. That is atheists helping religion. There is no time that we should elevate religion and help religion by calling ourselves agnostics. Oh, by the way, 90% of the country knows what an atheist is. Only half of the country, half of the country knows what an agnostic is. Half. That's not good. But what's worse is secular. <laughs> Where's my friend Dave Diskin? <laughs> he left. <laughs> Great. Folks, secular is recognized a whopping 30% of the time. 30% of the time, which means if you use the word secular instead of the word atheist, you will be understood one-third of the time. One-third. That's pretty bad. It's not as bad as Freethinker, though. Freethinker, ladies and gentlemen, is understood a whopping 10% of the time. 10%. In Fighting God, I quantify my numbers, folks. I can back my stuff up with independent quantitative data, the right kind of data. And guess what? If you use atheist free thought, atheist day, instead of free thought day, you will be understood nine times as often just by eliminating euphemisms. Some atheists even call themselves by their own religions, by their old religions. Secular Jews, cultural Christians, lapsed Catholics. These are the atheists who are getting lumped in together with believers, benefiting the religion that they themselves know to be a lie and making the people with whom they actually agree, us, look smaller. Nationwide, we atheists divide ourselves over literally nothing, while Christians unite despite huge theological differences. This makes the polls look like we are a nation of believers with a huge block of Christians. 
and atheists separated out into so many different subgroups that we look insignificant. We should be more than a quarter of that pie, but we look like we barely exist at all because we willingly and eagerly divide ourselves. As a result, religion runs roughshod over our political system. Presidents kowtow to preachers, and science is sacrificed in the classroom while politicians ignore us en masse. Abortion, gay rights, death with, dig death with dignity. These are separation of church and state issues and ladies and gentlemen, they exist because of our division. All these problems exist in America because atheists are only 2.5% of the population in the polls. Too often, we refuse to tell the truth. Too often, we refuse to own who and what we are. Religion says atheist is a bad word. And too often, we acquiesce. We use less understood euphemisms and divide ourselves into nothingness, perpetuating the idea that atheism is something of which to be ashamed. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when we atheists go out of our way to not call ourselves atheists, we help religion and we hurt our cause and the entire world by sheltering those who stymie science and commit massive fraud. And don't give me any of that crap about euphemisms being more acceptable. Nearly 90% of Americans know what an atheist is, and 90% don't know what a free thinker or, by the way, a humanist is. Think about that. Those terms are the more acceptable terms. The more socially acceptable terms are humanist and free thinker. Maybe it's because they're only understood 10% of the time. Do you think that might be? It's not the problem of the word, it's the problem of the concept. The atheism is the problem, and when we hide behind euphemism, we don't fix the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, many people chide me. Many people criticize me when I say we should all use the word atheist all the time to identify our religious position. They say, I have the right to call myself anything I want. And yes, you do. But I have the right to call you on your crap. And I have a very good reason to do so, ladies and gentlemen. How you self-identify is my business. How you self-identify affects me. It affects me, my family, my friends, and everyone else here. Think about why. There's no way, for instance, George W. Bush would have halted stem cell research for eight years, lowering the life expectancy of every human on Earth if he knew atheists were 27% of the population. When you avoid calling yourself an atheist, you make us look smaller. You make religion look stronger. You divide the movement and you stymie our progress just to please those who hate us. Yay. <laughs> but there is more. When you call yourself an atheist, you de-demonize us to the listener. In doing so, you make it easier for the next atheist to come out by getting the listeners used to us. By using a term that is understood 90% of the time, you attack bigotry 90% of the time. Spreading knowledge and defeating bigotry little by little for the next atheists. That's what makes calling yourself an atheist activism in and of itself. Furthermore, many atheists are not in a position to identify themselves as atheists openly, which makes it all the more important for those of us who can call ourselves atheists to do so. We brave the bigotry to make it easier for those who can't come out yet. That's what makes calling yourself an atheist humanism. In fact, that's what makes calling yourself an atheist more humanistic than calling yourself a humanist. When we hide behind terms like humanist and free thinker, that are misunderstood 90% of the time, we aren't communicating at all. We are just pretending to communicate while protecting the bigotry that keeps so many of us in hiding. That's not considerate. It's not compassion. And it's not humanism. It is cowardice. And we need to own it. And we need to deal with it. 
We need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we have the social responsibility to call ourselves atheists because it not only affects me and you, but every living person on the planet. When we hide behind euphemisms, we help nobody but religion. We preserve the bigotry so we don't piss off the bigots. Once again, the bad news is that our division fosters the theocracy that we all fight. The good news is we can fix it starting today. So we are 27% of the population, and I say we need to start acting like it. So let's give it a try. If you don't have a belief in a god, let me hear you say atheist. Atheist. If you, don't, if you want to be counted as a powerful voting block, let me hear you say atheist. atheist. If you care to make it easier for other atheists to come out of the closet. Let me hear you say atheist. atheist. Finally, if you're an atheist, let me hear you say atheist. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, our problem is not that we are small. It is that we are divided. Our problem is not that we are weak. It is that we don't know our own strength. Nobody does because we are so divided. We are already huge, we are already strong, and we are all ready to take our seat at society's table and kick religion to the government's curb. This is not dogma. This is not dogma. This is not falling in line. This is strategy. Atheist is by far the most understood term. It is correct, and using it benefits the world far more than any other term. Hiding behind euphemisms is selfish. It is cowardly. And it negatively affects us all by making us look smaller, and we need to cut that crap out. So I ask all of you, all of you, to stop doing religion the favor of dividing our movement. Use the word atheist for you, for me, and for everyone else here. Use the term that matters, that says the clear message. We are one community, indivisible with liberty, equality, and justice for all. And I will see you all next year at California Atheist Day. Hashtag Atheist Pride. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we want questions? Do we have time? Rock and roll, we have questions. We got 10 minutes, guys. We got 10 minutes. We got questions over here. Questions, go for it. I'll give you a hint. Don't call yourself a free thinker. <laughs> I've had this discussion with um, a group that I just recently joined, and um, the, the previous leaders of the group, uh, well, still current leaders of the group, uh, their argument is how do we bring in people who are questioning, not necessarily ready to jump in the atheist pool? It's, it's, it's a great question. So how do you bring in people who are questioning, who don't like to use the word atheist? Folks, it's a real good answer, too. Atheists and free thinkers. Atheists and humanists. If you have a free thinker group, and I'm sure that you'll, you can just ask around, if you're running a free thinker group, you're going to get religious people because they don't understand what a free thinker is. If you say atheists and free thinkers, everybody gets it. And it'll still bring in all the people who don't understand the terms. But the, pro the, the issue is to use the word atheist because that lets everybody know what you're doing. And free thinkers will give the aura of being broader, even though atheist is a broader word. Hi, Dan. I asked you this question once before, but I think everybody here would like to hear your answer on this. Mm. At what point are atheists going to be uh, over 50 percent? Ah. Uh, so, so here's the scoop. Uh, it's going to happen within our lifetime. And when you're talking about 50 percent, you're talking about 50 percent in the country, right? So it's going to happen within our lifetime. Uh, right now, the millennials are about 40 percent, okay? And that doesn't include, that doesn't include the millennials who call themselves Christians and Jews but are atheists. 
The biggest block of atheists are the atheists who call themselves Christian. According to Barna of 2009, 22% of people who call themselves Christians think God is a metaphor for love or the universe or something real. Okay, if God is a metaphor for something real, you're an atheist. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you're, if you're wondering about when we're going to get over 50%, when the millennials are, I would say, 40, um, we'll be over 50%. It's going to happen within our lifetime. Yeah. It's gonna, it, folks, it's a wonderful time to be an atheist activist. <laughs> and this is so important because we're growing so much and we need to organize our power. We need to take our power. We need to take our place at the table. And we can't do it if we hide behind euphemisms. As we grow, we need to own the correct word. We need to own the word that's understood. And we need to own the word that communicates our, our intention. I think I just turned this off. This way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you for, answer, for asking that question. The fact that we're growing so quickly is the reason that we need to use the word atheist. That's how we get our power. Unification. Sir. Hi, yes. So my, my question is kind of picking, backing off the first question because I think for me, I'm an ex uh, Seventh day Adventist, and a, and a lot of people, from whatever religion you come from, you have a lot of family members and people that are very close to you. And I, I know what it's like to be, as of three years ago, very deeply religious. And so when you're on one side of it's it's a paradigm shift depends on where you stand. Yeah. So if you're on this side, and you see atheist as being this, meaning this, yeah. and meaning against me. Yeah. So if I say I'm an atheist to you, yeah, you know what it means, but it means this to you. You don't know, see what I'm saying? So I thought maybe clever thinking. I thought of myself as a non-theist. I just don't have a dog in any of those fights. Now I think I'm becoming more active, maybe more leaning toward a Sam Harris side of the house, where I'm thinking like, no, there's a, a real problem with religion. Like it can really hurt people, you know, not just... It does yeah. really hurt yeah, everyone. So, so I guess what I'm asking you is how do you, like, negotiate that? And I'm leaning more toward what you're saying, like, define yourself as an atheist, but then to those people, they're on this side. Yeah. Atheist to them means, well, you're against me. Or yeah. Because I'm, I'm aligned with Jesus or I'm aligned with uh, Muhammad or whoever, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, it is so hard because people who are indoctrinated from birth, they are just told what they are, yeah. and they are told, you are a Christian, you are a Jew, you are a Muslim, <laughs> and they cannot separate themselves out from that religion. These are the people who need you to say the word atheist. Okay. These are the people who need to hear you shoot that down. These are the people who need to hear you say, I'm an atheist, oh, by the way, here's what that means, okay? okay? okay. Uh, if you have the ability to do that, you need to do that. And if you hide behind euphemisms, you're not making yourself known. You're, you're literally hiding behind euphemisms. Look, I know it's hard to tell people what they don't want to hear, but they still need to hear it. A lot of people who are in religion are closeted atheists. And a lot of people who are in religion can be moved to at least being tolerant of atheists. But if we hide behind euphemisms, they'll never move. They'll never move. They'll never budge. So I say, yeah, if you can. And I understand that some people can't. But if you can, yeah. it's your moral prerogative to call yourself an atheist to the people who don't like atheists because not only do you uh, help solve the bigotry for them against you, you help solve the bigotry for them against other atheists. Okay. So the next atheist that your parents meet right. won't be evil because right. they already love an atheist. Right. Sure. <laughs> See? So right. that's the way you do it. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing, Mr. Silverman? How you doing, Mr. Hill? <laughs> Lovely. So let me get this straight. That, that, that game show that you, you win a trip to Compton, that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I identify. I am a free-thinking, skeptical, secular, humanist, agnostic, pastafarian, non-believing Satanist. At least you're not an atheist. <laughs> I don't need no extra baggage. <laughs> Already black. No, he's heard this a million times. That was for you guys. But my real question to you, what are you doing specifically to reach out to create a more diverse, 
American Atheist Organization? That's a fantastic question. Thank you. Uh, what I'm doing is working with uh, affinity groups. I'm working with black non-believers, black skeptics. I'm working with those groups that identify with those, uh, with those organizations, with those people, for those uh, groups. Um, I have uh, worked hard to load, our, uh, to load our conventions with diversity, to make sure that we have a lot of representation on our uh, convention. And in fact, I'm very proud of the fact that almost all of our, well, all of our conventions since I took over have been diverse as far as male, female, and as far as people of color. But that's not enough. Um, I understand that as American atheists, we can't really fight every battle. And we can't target every group. And so I work with those people who target those groups to bring them in uh, alongside us. Thank you for your answer. <laughs> Do you have a better idea? I will hand the floor back to you now. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, hey, I'm my, my name's Jill. Um, anyway, uh, kind of following up on something Steve mentioned, uh, for those of us who are in an atheistic religion, who, how can we just kind of echo what you're saying, how, how you should be up front, you should use the word atheist. Yeah. For myself, I would also use the word Satanist. Yeah. Um, or atheistic Satanism, which will cross anybody's brain. Uh, but how can we help while still identifying as we do? Okay, so. How would you prefer it, the branding, I might say? I, I would say atheistic Satanists. I, I would say, I would always use the word atheist because that's the word that's understood, okay? And as much as I love what the Church of Satan is doing, uh, I'm sorry, as much as I love, I'm sorry. The satanic temple. Satanic temple, as much as I love what y'all are doing, Okay. As much as I love what y'all are doing, uh, your brand doesn't have the recognition that the word atheist does. True. So I always say, first of all, I always say that there's no such thing as a non-theistic religion. This is something with which Lucian, Lucian and I disagree. Um, but I would always use the word atheist, and then I would supplement that with Satanist uh, to make your point. So if they can't get past the atheist, they probably won't get past the Satanist. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have time for one more question. Are there any more questions? Yeah, one minute. All right, well, you know what? That's cool. Oh, go, go, go for it. <laughs> Rock and roll. Right, might be controversial. As Sam oh, Harris no. and uh, Peter no, Singer point out. Oh, no, not a controversial. Out. Wait. <laughs> and thanks for your good work. As Sam Harris and Peter Singer point out, the human caused immiseration of farm animals is not aligned with our do unto others values. Are there any existing, I changed the word from hum secular <laughs> to atheism based, animal advocacy organizations, and or is anyone here interested in exploring ways we can effectively advocate for the well-being of all conscious creatures and help bring awareness to the power of our food plates? Well, I don't know of any atheist animal rights groups. I do know that PETA is rife with atheists. I do know that the animal rights organizations that are already out there are full of atheists. There's a lot of crossover between the atheist community and the animal rights community. And um, I don't think we need, I mean, I would speculate that I don't think we need a, an atheist animal rights organization because there are so many atheists that are already in the animal rights organizations that exist. That's my experience. It's completely anecdotal. I cannot back it up with data. I guess I'm just sort of pushing the thought that as do we believe in the golden rule, most I would say is a fundamental value for non-believer, for atheists, um, uh, that we at least could talk among ourselves and look at our own, uh, how we're helping all conscious creatures and how we're not necessarily awake to how we are torturing them. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. With our food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, I think we're done. Thank you all for that great round of applause. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next year at Atheist Pride Day. All right. Up, up. Got to get the coffee. Thank you so much, David Silverman. <laughs>